what is the biggest challenge in our relationship right now, and what do you think it is teaching us? We are in... Okay, first of all, funny enough, she literally reminds me of one of my cousins. I love her hair. I do love this set. I have lots of thoughts about him, but I'll keep them to myself. A very weird spot. We're broken up. Oh. But we still... Oh. Well, now I'm extra confused. Act like we're together. Oh. And I feel like I have one foot in and one foot out. I'm not fully committed, but I enjoy the perks of having a partner and mm. the love, the affection, the someone to just- Wait, I'm so sorry. Two years, ex-partners, Rocky and Ben, love that. Mm. The love, the affection, the someone to just share life with, yet there is a part of me that is still seeking something outside of you. I daydream about other scenarios. And it's been very, I think, taxing and adding a stress to our dynamic uh, because of that. I, and I feel also, at least, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it's feel like you're, it feels like you are very committed that like no matter what, like I'm it. Hmm. And I feel a pressure that, and I'm still working on, is that because of like my trauma that I don't feel lovable because of things I've done in our relationship? Mm -hmm. mm. Or if it's me, like the grass is greener or like let me keep this here just in case something else works out. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I feel like that is, sort of detrimental and, and causing a lot more chaos for the, for the both of us. Yeah. yeah. I feel like absolutely nothing was said. It's, it's tough and I feel like the best way to find out is give it a little time and if you move on before that time's up and that's... Girl, you're out, girl. He's not the love of your life. Move on. This is what I'm trying to say, girl. Move the f*** on. Guys, it's not this hard. When you meet the love of your life, it isn't this way. This is not the story. Do you want to be this story in the storybook? That's up to you, girl. But this is not the love of your life. You know, I'm not gonna... There's nothing I can do and what nothing I would want to do to change that. Oh, this is so much funnier now that I've seen the TikTok clip and it's going to come up later, you guys are going to ugly laugh so hard. Listen to this. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is so much funnier now that I know what's coming. This guy here, bro. I'm going to. There's nothing. It's just I'm going to. Uh, oh, bro. But I feel we have grown more than ever before this past year, and I'm hoping that it works in the fa my favor, but all at the same time, like- <laughs> Oh, not our favor, my favor. Mm. I understand that it's like, it has to feel right for both of us. And I'm not here to give you a life that doesn't feel like yours. So I'm hoping, you know, it shakes out in a way that that's best for both of us. I appreciate you being, on being so honest about this because it's, uh, yeah. It's a big decision. Yeah. Okay, what are you hesitant to ask me and why? I think there's only one question I'm hesitant to ask you and why, and that's because I know the answer is gonna be not right now, Ooh. or we'll see what happens. Do you know what that question is? I wanna hear it from you. It's, it's it, proposing. Ooh. There is definitely some t time that has to transpire in order to truly um, know. Because at this point, I'm not someone you can trust financially. I, am, I have been very feast or famine. And there's been a lot of steps I've been taking to change that. But I can't, my words can't, you know, I can't, you can't run on just words. You can't date for. Did, did anybody, did we, do we know their ages? Because they look like they're in their 30s. What do you say? Dating for potential. Like, oh, oh, dating someone's potential. But we might be that someone. Yeah. Oh, mm, dating for potential, toxic. Uh, you know, yeah. so like. Again, you're dating for the. Okay, guys, I'm going to reword this because we talked about it yesterday, but I just want to say it again. 
you do when you're dating for someone's potential, you're seeing if they'll change character. Because if you have a good character, then you'll do right by the relationship. But if you have a bad sense of character, not a bad person, but a bad sense of character, you won't do right by the relationship. So someone, probably both of them at the same time, aren't doing right by their relationship in some capacities. But when you're, you know, that potential thing, everyone thinks like, oh, when you're dating for someone for their potential, you're waiting for them to like grow up. You're not waiting for them to grow up. You're waiting for their character to mature or be mature or be good enough. Because even when you're young, you can have a strong sense of character and do right by your relationship. You know how many couples I know, my brother included, who married his wife at 22 and 21, I think, or 23 and 22, he's always had the same character. He was always reliable, always a good kid, always did his hardest. He works his hardest. He's now 30, five kids, house, financially, set good job and he's always done right by his family he's always done right by hit the people always since he was a child people have a character about them even at my worst my character was pretty solid i was the meanest to myself in all of the times i was ever cruel to anybody even when i was toxic i was toxic to myself the most though of course it did lash out at other people as it does but my character has always been pretty much the same i've never really deviated from my values and even though i didn't even form them till i was later like later in my life i never did the things that a lot of people with poor character do in my opinion like cheat or you know like ruin someone's life or something like that or in this case lead someone on in a sense like i've always been very blunt with my partners hey I can't marry the person you are right now. And I'm confused on how long I'm supposed to wait because you keep telling me you're going to do this thing, but you never do it. So it feels like I'm dating you for your potential. That's the lesson I learned in my 20s. What I thought potential was, was them needing the right circumstance to be better. But I realized now it was their character. In my opinion, you can disagree, of course. In my opinion, I didn't realize like the reason I never wanted to marry anybody I dated before is because they had bad character. And that's why I didn't realize it though. I thought it, I thought it was just like something else. Like, oh, they just didn't have enough money or they didn't have enough, they didn't have the circumstance to be a better person doesn't matter your circumstance you can still be a good person that's why no matter what other people do it doesn't mean it controls what you do right though we have moments of weakness of course okay so let's see what they say i feel the right thing to do is to ask that question when it's actually the right time and that's the only question that i can't really ask you today because we share everything so what possibilities or opportunities are we denying by maintaining our relationship? And how do you feel about that? Uh, I feel like this is something that I feel like I'm plagued by. This idea of us being together is actually holding us back. Like when the year apart started and I moved away, all of a sudden you've got a ton of work. And you, I mean, you were making money and I was not in the picture. Mm -hmm. And I felt more at ease. I felt like, uh, yeah, just more present with myself and less anxious. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, even when two people get together, that are good people, they could make each other bad people. Not on purpose, but I think on accident, sort of. Like if being around a person gives you anxiety and makes you anxious and you feel relieved being away from them, ma'am, please take note. The person you're gonna do life with, if you're gonna do life with somebody, should make you feel less anxious and more at ease, period. Don't You don't have to do life with someone just because you love them, guys. You don't have to do life with someone because you have good things. You get to choose who to do life with and you should do life with a person that really makes you feel safe and really you have a symbiotic relationship with you feel safe, they feel safe. Nobody wants to come home to a house they don't feel safe in. And if she's coming home to anxiety, well, that's not good. If you're this self-aware, why are you still trying to pretend to be confused about y'all as a relationship? I think it's denial. I mean, I've definitely been in an off again, on again relationship in my 20s. I've done that a couple of times. And every time we try, we're, we were young though. Like we're trying to fix it. We're trying to say like, oh, maybe this is the problem. Maybe this is the problem. Maybe this is the problem. We just weren't compatible and we just couldn't understand that because like, why can't we make it work if we both like each other? Why can't we make it work if the sex is so good? Why can't we make it work? Look at all the ways we're compatible. I think sometimes you try to fight for something uh, because you really do like and are connected to that specific consciousness. And then you have to realize like, yeah, but at what cost, right? And again, I do think we confuse 60% compatibility with like 100% or we think it's good enough. I, I don't think it's good enough. I think you should be very compatible with somebody you decide to do life with because then you'll have conversations like this. If you don't, 
money, finances, children, location, lifestyle. All my partners and I never shared money, period. Never. And we always hated how the other person did money. But now I do money and budgeting with my partner and it's so nice and it's so easy and it's so relaxed and it's because we have the same values. The idea is like everything gets easier when you're on the same page. Fishy says, do most people settle for around 60%? Who knows? I, don't, I wish I knew. What do you guys think? I feel like most people settle for relationships in which they're at least 40 to 60% compatible. That seems to be the average, which is why divorce rates are, I think are so high in my opinion. I do think people settle. I think people think it's good enough. Look at this couple. I think a lot of people are like this couple and no offense, no thank you. Uh, you know how I'm, I have anxiety. So it became, I, I feel like my mind was freed up a little bit to not at least be anxious about you and me. And I didn't have to be anxious about like, is he doing his work or not? Or how does the apartment look? All of those things. Mm -hmm. And I feel like by being together, um, not just like how I'm impacting you, but myself as well. It's like, I'm, like I said, I'm like waiting and waiting for this magical moment that it's gonna be like, oh, duh, all along, it was him. How could I have not seen that? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think, should it be this hard? How long is too long to wait? And there are other people. I am certain there is someone where I won't feel so, I mean, not to overuse this term, but triggered by. Ooh. I mean, like this morning, running late, I felt so charged helping you get out the door. I was like, I don't wanna have to do that with a partner. Like, I look forward to, to that, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, I think me being so overbearing at times with, go ahead, let's get out the door, like vice versa, right. roles reverse, that that kind of pressure on you is also very unhealthy. So he's unreliable. So she becomes a nag. And now she's a bitch because he was unreliable. I really resent these dynamics. Yes, there are dynamics in which women are just nags and they're grumpy and they're always picking at everything their guy does, every single fucking thing. And it's so annoying. But in this dynamic, I think what we're seeing is a guy who isn't reliable and he's kind of like a kid. And she's like, hi, I'd really like a partner that isn't a child and I need you to be reliable. When is that gonna happen? So I feel safe enough marrying you. And he's like, marry me now, even though I'm not reliable, even though I can't hold down a job or help participate in this relationship in the way that makes sense. This is why they're on again and off again. They're broken up right now. This is an on again, off again relationship. Will they, won't they? They won't, don't do it. But I've been here myself where like, you think it's gonna work. You think you just need therapy. You need something or this person's gonna change. They might, but obviously not at this time and not with you. And that's the thing. When you date someone for your potential, their potential, maybe they'll change, but probably not in this trajectory, right? And that's the thing. Like even my partner said the other day, like, oh my gosh, you really didn't date me for my potential. And I said, nope. I really like you just the way you are. If this was our life forever, it's a really great life. I'm really happy with who we are as people. He's very reliable. He's very consistent. We communicate so well. We really like spending time together. I never think, is this like, is this gonna work? It's just so obvious it's gonna work. Versus I remember I had an ex who like wanted to marry me. He's like, let's go to the courthouse right now and get married. And I was like, no. I was like, I can't marry you in good faith right now because I don't like who you are. Like, you're not reliable. You're mean to people and you're mean to you yourself. You're mean to me. You don't have good relationships with people. You need therapy and won't get it. You're confusing about the way you overpromise. Like, I was always very blunt with my exes. Like, I don't like this. I don't like this thing about you. And I'm worried it's going to follow us into our marriage for 50 years. And I'm going to be a divorcee, which is fine. No judgment. But I don't want that for my life. And it's hard for people to get that, but it was what kind of almost made it clear to me like, okay, like there really is a difference between dating somebody for their potential and dating for someone for their character. And I just want to date people for their character. Like, are you a good person? You have a really good character. But she and him, they're holding on to something. Mimi says, can I ask a question? She seems to really understand that he's not for her. Why is she willing, willingly abusing herself and him as well? Would you say they're both abusive? I don't know if they're abusive, but I would call this a toxic relationship personally. I would say this is not a healthy relationship. I would say this is a toxic relationship. And I think that this person, these people are, honestly, they probably don't know themselves or their values enough to just say like, this isn't it. And I remember when I went back into the dating market for like three years, I would ask people, I'm looking for this kind of partner. Are you this kind of person? And they're like, oh, I could change to be one. And I was like, nope, I only wanted 
you if you really fit into the thing. I don't want somebody who's going to change to be with me, right? So I would call this a toxic relationship in my opinion. Fishy says, uh, why the aversion to being a divorcee? I was thinking about this. Uh, honestly, girl, paperwork mostly. I don't have a problem with people who've been divorced. I think like the stigma of people who've been divorced is definitely silly because so many people get divorced for so many reasons, especially in a world where people are dating. Look, I come from a queer bubble where most people are living with their partners anyways. Like a divorce isn't really the thing. But if you're interested in long-term commitment, like for me, paperwork is serious because you know how much I hate paperwork, guys. So for Brittany, doing paperwork is a big deal. You know how much paperwork we had to fill out to get married? Because I'm I'm an American and he's a European. Like we had to fill out so much paperwork. Like it is not a joke. So I'm not about to do all that paperwork for a person who's going to divorce me, okay? Or vice, like, we better be doing life together. It's really about what you're willing to do for a relationship, you know? Sarah says, I can't think of something more unattractive than nagging a grown-ass man, literally. I'm sure there's someone else out there that won't be like that mm -hmm. for you. Why do you think you are the partner for me? <laughs> Girl. How much time you got? No. Um, <laughs> um, I think I'm the partner for you because... I gave you, I think, what you needed more than anything, which is unconditional love, and sometimes to my detriment. Oh. But I, uh. you've said many times how if there's one thing I have more, you know, plenty of, it's it's my love for you. I feel like, and I could be wrong because I don't know these people, I feel like it's not unconditional love. I feel like he's trying to trap her a bit. And I feel like she doesn't have unconditional love for him either. She wants to, but they don't have it. I think men like this, this is me stereo. I don't know. I don't know who this human is, but I'm getting the vibe that he's the kind of guy that thinks he unconditionally loves her, but he actually is just hoping she'll say yes because she's stable and she's somebody who's like better than him in some way. And he's hoping to kind of have her fulfill the thing he can't in a really significant way there is a difference between a person look as somebody whose like partner doesn't work um now that we're married obviously he worked before but like there is a difference between a partner who doesn't work and a partner who refuses to work a partner who doesn't participate in the financial stability of the household and a partner that gets with you because you're financially stable there is a huge difference. That's why I need, like, that's why I'm so into categories, like, which one are you? Because I've never minded if my partner worked or not. That never was a thing for me. What I cared about was whether or not you were going to take advantage. He feels like the type that says, I love you so unconditionally, but takes advantage. That's what he feels like to me. He feels like somebody who isn't actually bringing joy into the relationship, and she knows it, and she feels scared of that because even though he seems like a nice enough person he doesn't seem like a good enough partner he could be a very good person and a very bad partner but i think a well like a healthy person i think a truly healthy person um would would know it but would treat this relationship with more dignity i think is how i want to say it because i feel like i do get you and the places where i'm not the right person for you are just works in progress. I feel like it's just kind of tweaking a few things here and there to have the space and have the, have the independent growth that we need to be able to meet each other where we'll be mm. versus where we're at now. Because right now it's kind of chaotic. Hmm. And it's not all just because of our own dynamic, but things in our life that we're not putting enough attention mm. and love into. Mm. So like everything you just answered earlier about why you're going to be in Atlanta is right on the money. And a lot of those things are things I need to do for myself too, is have the space. So yeah, I think we're like really close to being in that space, but only time will tell. Mm -hmm. See, what does this mean? Sometimes I, sometimes I hear from couples and they'll be like, oh, this was the love of my life, but I couldn't be with them. And I was like, why not? Did they die? And they're like, no, we just lived in different cities. And I'm like, this was the love of your life and you couldn't be with them because you lived in a different city? I, I'm i so sorry. When I say the love of my life, I'm, I ain't talking about no 
separation because of cities, girl. Like when I say the love of my life, I'm not talking about somebody who's 15% compatible. We're talking about a person that feels like they were designed for you and you're not going to be with them because you live in different cities? Nah. No. Nah. No. 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 I will hear from couples who are like, we're compatible. We're we're soulmates. Um, but they don't want to be with me right now. No, that is not your soulmate, bro. And I don't mean soulmate in the woo-woo way. I just mean very high compatibility partner. Like, that is not the love of your life. The love of your life isn't like, you're definitely the love of my life. But like, I just don't want to be with you right now. <laughs> All of us being on the internet. Oh, I want to find the love of my life. All of us literally making content about finding partnerships and reading romance novels and watching anime. Like, I can't wait to find it. You're telling me you found the person and you won't be together because it's just not the right time? Girl, this is not your person. I wish I could be with you, but like, I really need to be in the sun and like the snow is just not good for my skin, you know? But this is definitely the love of my life. This is the love of my life, so I'm gonna cheat on them. Oh, this is the love of my life. Shut the f up. I'm so sorry, with peace and love. You know how people have even had cheating situations and they're like, this is definitely the love of my life. You cheated on the love of your life? You cheated on the love of your life? That's what you're telling me you did? Ma'am, please, please. When was the last time you considered ending this relationship? And why haven't oh. you? <laughs> um, aren't they literally broken up? Am I confused? I mean, I guess they mean for real, for real. Like, actually, like, broken up, never talking to each other again, you know? Michael says, is it possible to not take love seriously enough? Yes, but also there's different kinds of love. Like there's different kinds of love, right? So I think a lot of us fall in love in a, in a very superficial way with low compatibility. And we project a lot, like a lot onto the future of that person or that person. I think love is so unique and diverse and different. And there's so many ways to love somebody. I think toxic love is still love. I just think it's, I just think it's toxic. You know, so I would say healthy love is some of the most profound love and then unconditional love is even more profound. It's so profound, unconditional love. And some people go their whole life without ever knowing it. You know, they really fucking do. Alice says, I'm sorry if you're thinking the grass is greener during a relationship. That's not your soulmate. Try again, literally. Thank you, Alice. Yes, if you're in a relationship, and you're like, this is the love of my life. But I hope I meet somebody better. Girl, sit down. Sit the f down. What? We are not talking about the same thing, bros. Let me say this. And like, I know you probably will never, not you guys, but people will never believe me. I remember being in relationships where I would be like talking to my partners. I'd say, I'm very unhappy. And I'm wondering if I should be with somebody else. And they'd be like, yeah, I'm thinking about that too. And I'm like, should we be with other people? And they'd be like, no, like we're, we are meant to be like, I love you. And I was like, yeah, I love you too. Versus this marriage that I'm in now. It's like, I never even think about it. Okay. I just don't. We've been living together over a year. I don't ever think about it. We've had just the most flawless, perfect time together. We just enjoy each other's company so much, but it's so healthy. It's just like, I never think about doing life with somebody else. I never think I picked the wrong person. I never think this marriage isn't going to last. Like I never have any doubts, just zero doubts. Compared to my last relationships in which I would be so doubtful, I would tell my friends, my family, you'd see me like, oh my God, the doubt. I was riddled with doubt. I was so stressed from doubt. And it was because I knew I was in the wrong relationship, but I just didn't know why it was wrong. And I think that's what I focus on now is like trying to explain to people, how do you know if you're in the wrong relationship? There really is data, guys. Your life is just data. Review the data. If you want to be completely like scientific about it, then run it like an experiment and run your run your own relationship like you're doing a study or writing a paper about it. Like you're researching your own relationship because the data will tell you. Discord said, I've never understood the idea of different cities. I always did long distance dating when I had to. Same girl. Even my husband and I had to live apart for some time due to career reasons. We were visiting all the time. Literally, my husband and I talk about this all the time. But if I have to go back to America and he has to stay in Croatia, like, we'll just make it work. Like, what are we going to do? Get divorced because, like, paperwork went weird? Like, I, I promised this man my life. He promised his life. Like, we're doing our life together. Which means if some of your life gets you taken away from each other, you do life together. Right? But okay. You do use, guys. You, could, you do you. No judgment. 
Discord said, I was a teacher who needed a foot in the door until we could buy a property together. Like if you won't change jobs or move, they ain't the love of your life. But then again, I grew up hearing about how my grandpa hitchhiked to see my grandma as often as he could and sent her letters with postage for her to mail back when she didn't have money, when he had to work away to make money to support them. (laughs) Same. Like I heard so many stories growing up about how hard life was, but not the marriages, how life took you away from your partners, how you had to be away from each other, how things went, weren't perfect, but you stayed together. Now, again, I don't want you to stay in an abusive relationship. I don't want you to stay in a toxic relationship. I don't want you to stay in a marriage if it's toxic, right? So this is a couple that I would say, don't be together. It sounds like you're not compatible, But also I understand what it's like to think, yeah, I know we're not compatible now, but maybe we will be in the future. It's either now or never. Unless you are a very specific type of story, which does occur, and which you dated in your 20s and you met again in your 40s. That can happen. Those stories exist. I don't want to discount them. Okay. But this, this, just move on. When was the last time you considered ending this relationship? And why haven't you? (laughs) Uh, Today. (laughs) <laughs> oh. this, I'm not lying. This morning, I was right. really upset that you weren't prepared. I mean, mm-hmm. you it was fine. But I think I go, it just like flares up this mm-hmm. part of me when you're not responsible. Oh. And not responsible, not reliable, you know? Look, adulting is exhausting and adulting is hard, but for sake, step up to the plate when necessary and admit your faults when necessary. But there's got to be at least a bare minimum standard. We're talking about in our bubble here, neurodivergence and disability and all the reasons to feel like you can't accomplish it and we still fucking find a way. And I'm not saying that I know if these people are disabled or neurodivergent or anything, but I'm saying you make it fucking work. I've seen people with cancer get up and go to work. And by the way, I was thinking about this the other day. Like, you know, people who get cancer still have to go to work. Like, do we live in a world where we dream where that isn't a thing? Like, if you get chronically ill, you either get on disability or you continue working because no one's going to come pay your bills. So it's like you're looking at this person and she's telling you exactly what she's afraid of. And you're just like, I want to marry you, though. And I'm like, oh. Sir, you're giving her none of the reassurance. Where is the reliability? I start going in that loop of like, how could you be a dad? How, like, it's, oh, you could- once you start asking yourself, is he good enough to be a dad? Quit. Kick him to the curb. That is, listen, even though my partner and I have decided not to have bio kids and to produce new spawn, you know, we would be great parents. And we talk about that all, all the time. He would have been a great dad or a great parent. And I would have been a great parent. And I think that's important even if you're not going to have kids. It's saying you would have been a good adult to help a child be a person. Not that you necessarily would have been a great parent or a bad parent, but like a you are a good enough person for a child to be safe with. I think that's really what it's about. You know, <laughs> Jose says I'm tired of them, to be honest, and I'm just here for Brittany. Well, you know, girl. Thank you. I appreciate you. This is this is I knew this would be exhausting when I found this TikTok. But I also think it's important to give real examples of what I'm trying to say when I say this is a toxic relationship. And it takes two to be toxic. You see how she is a participant in this relationship. She's not being held hostage. She's in this relationship and she's choosing to be in a toxic relationship. Not all people necessarily understand that they're choosing it, but this is a choice, girl. Come on. You could be a great dad. You're loving. But Mm -hmm. is it all going to fall on me? Am I going to have to be like you're another child in this situation? So it, when moments like that, and it's unfair because it's just one moment and right. everything was fine. You were actually okay. But mm-hmm. I, it was just stressful. And I go into that loop of he's irresponsible. He won't be able to do this, that, and the other. And provide, like, and I don't break up with you because then I give myself a moment to cool down. And then also you're very good with your words. Like you say- oh. Oh, you're very good with your words, he says. Things and I, like you just said, you know, works in progress. You're doing this, you're doing all these steps to be where you think I want you to be. And I just so badly want it to be true so that I don't have to keep, I don't want to go out there and date. Like I don't want to have to start over, but I will. But I think there's a part of me that- I never thought about it as starting over. I think that's the key difference between my brain and maybe other people's. I never think about dating as starting over. Because 
this isn't your person. So you're not starting over. You, you just, this isn't your person. Like you can't, it's not called starting over. You didn't even find the thing yet. Starting over is like when you found the love of your life and they die from cancer. That's starting over. This isn't starting over. He was never your person. You won't even marry him. You won't even pick him permanently. You, you're breaking up all the time and getting back together. So you're not starting over. You're still just dating. You are in the dating world, girly. You are in the dating world. That's the thing that I don't understand about these people. Like, girl, you can't start over. You never even started. She's still just dating. Like, that's why I don't know why, girl, ma'am. <laughs> what? That's just like holding on that maybe it is him. And if I just wait a little longer, wait a little longer. And that is why we are here. Like you said, the first time we broke, you know, we separated for several months, we weren't in each other, each other's environment and we thrived. And I don't think that's just because we weren't meant to be around each other. It's because we had space without being kind of like bumping into each other and having that dynamic of, you know, the things that bother me about you and vice versa. Oh, and now, yeah, mm. we're at this place where we are definitely further along on our emotionally emotional intelligence journey our personal growth journey and and having that space is like feels to me like the last missing piece like i want to have more of a routine i don't have a routine maybe he is adhd or neurodivergent so he doesn't have a routine rivet says maybe not starting over but regret of time felt wasted also something i don't believe in i don't believe in wasted time because i think you're on a journey it's like do you really are you really wasting time if it takes you 12 hours longer than everyone else to beat the final boss in like some video game. Like that's just the journey you're on. I don't think it's wasted time to live your life. I think it's only time wasted if you thought you could have been doing something else, which you never would have could. If you would have been doing something else, you would have been doing something else. Look, you're always just doing what you were always going to do. You can't waste time because you didn't have an option to do something else. Otherwise, I think you would have done it, in my opinion. So I also don't believe in wasted time. And I don't really believe in starting over unless you've been with the love of your life and they've died on you or you've gotten divorced somehow or like, because you're not even starting over. You're just on a different chapter of your life. Like life doesn't start over, guys. You just keep going. It's not a video game where you have multiple lives. You're just on one long life with different aspects and different growths and different layers, in my opinion. Now. It's chaos and moving you out of your apartment into my apartment for a couple of days and then move, then going to Georgia is crazy. So like, it's a wild time. And here we are on the end doing this and then you're leaving tomorrow. So it's, um, I just, I'm really excited about finishing, you know, finishing this like pre-marriage thing, hopefully, but we'll see. <sighs> I have more to say, but I'm just gonna move on to the next question. Right. <laughs> Cause some Let's of the things you're it. saying, it still feels like you're trying to convince me. And I just, I have to, I think I have to back out of the, yeah. this. To be continued on that. <laughs> if you have to beg her to marry you, move the fuck on. Why won't he move on? So we're saying, why won't she move on? Why won't he move on? This man got rejected a marriage proposal and he won't move the fuck on. Isn't that interesting that neither of these people are moving the fuck on? I've been there. It's a toxic relationship. J-Man says, I think 90% of the time, if you break up with someone, getting back together won't work out. I agree. I, I might even be higher. Yeah, I think if you're going to do break up and get back together, that's just a toxic relationship. And I've had people, I look, I've had people who are like, you know, don't you think our relationship is amazing? Look how many times we've broken up and gone back together. Don't you think it's beautiful? No, I think it's fucking tragic. I think it is fucking tragic that grownups, and I'm not talking about young people. I mean, people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s are having getting back together, break up relationships and thinking they have something profound. What are you, a 15 year old edgy vampire reader? Grow the fuck up or live your life the way you want, but I do not approve. And if you need my validation, go to therapy. Okay. No, I don't think it's cute that my friends in their thirties can't get their shit together and they're dating shitty people and they keep breaking up and getting back together with people. They call me one week. They love them. They call me the other week. They hate them. When are you going to grow up? Let's go. Grow the f up. Okay. Let's Go. What is a sacrifice you've made that I haven't acknowledged? There's mm. gotta be. And by the way, it's just because you won't admit your 
fucked up, okay? If you admit you're fucking up and you're like, I'm a toxic bitch, then I'm with you, girl, be toxic. But it's the fact that they're out here being like, I'm not the toxic one. I'm not the one in a bad relationship. Girl, you're in a bad relationship. That's why every time you talk about it, it's bad. What is a sacrifice you've made that I haven't acknowledged? There's Mm. gotta be. What? Yeah. And why do you think that is? Sacrifice I've made. Um... Honestly, I guess the biggest one would be continuing to be with you when you've told me many times you don't want to be with me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think the biggest sacrifice is definitely that I keep staying in a relationship where my partner continues to reject me and tell me that I'm immature and not worthy of their love. And I really feel like it's a huge sacrifice that I'm making, much like a parent who saves their child from an oncoming car, like that kind of sacrifice. Yeah, I feel like that's what I'm making right now. What? That's not a sacrifice. That's just fucking stupidity. That's not a sacrifice, bro. What are you talking about? Can you even imagine that that's what he's qualifying as a sacrifice? God bless him. Go to therapy. Find a priest. Do a seance. Take shrooms. Let's go do something else. And can, trying to convince you that um, this is right. Uh, uh. All right. What oh my God. You- is this Lachlan? Oh my God, guys. Did we just find Lachlan? <laughs> did we just find Lachlan, bros? <laughs> Jesus. What do you feel is the next step in our relationship? The next step in our relationship is, well, to truly take this serious and commit to not checking in, like doing this part independently. Mm-hmm. When I go to Atlanta, I don't want to update you on my personal life. Oh, so she is. See, see, see. Oh, why aren't you breaking up? Are you broken up? Why isn't it ended? So she's going to go do her own thing and doesn't want to hear from the love of her life. I'm not even going to play with you guys. Listen to me. I'm going to do a podcast on the differences between interdependent and codependent relationships because my husband had to leave the house today to do a government thing, like a paperwork thing. And I literally missed him so badly. I just wanted to talk to him and he texts and we just text a lot when he's away. But we just have so many things we want to tell each other. We do not want to do life separate. We did not work this hard for all of our lives to find each other just to be separate from each other. But we are both very independent people. So how are you independent and interdependent versus dependent and codependent? And I'm going to do a podcast about that in my personal opinion. Because look, we're not all therapists, but you can know if your life is healthy or not. And it's based on the data. My partner and I are so in love, so excited to be with each other. We don't want to do adventures alone. Unless, obviously, like I'm working right now. This is my adventure alone. You can see me working. I'm not sitting here giving up my job to be with my husband. That'd be dependency. I'm sitting here saying, I got to go to work right now, but I love you and I can't wait to talk to you about it when I'm done. It's about the balance between responsibilities. The fact that she has to ditch him to go do her dream job or whatever she's doing. No, like this is not the love of your life. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people, they're not looking for the love of their life. They think they are, but they're not. They're looking for good enough. And I think that's something I even had to admit to myself where I was like, I don't know if I'm looking for the love of my life if I keep dating losers. Like, how could I be dating these losers and literally think this is the love of my life? Do I think the love of my life is a loser? And then I was like, oh shit, I gotta fix something in my life because I'm dating losers. And I was like, that's weird, bro. Why am I doing that? It's just because of your low self-esteem or you're in your 20s, you're young, you're figuring it out, you're in 30s, 40s, you had a bad upbringing, your parents aren't together. Something is happening that makes us pick our decisions, but it's about knowing why for your story. Why for your story is this your life? I know we're going to have some overlapping work, Yep. but really adhere to the boundary of no sharing personal stuff. That even means for you, I wish you well in your career and all the things that you have goals for. Mm -hmm. And I just want to believe that you're going to do it. And I don't need to hear every step of the way. And I don't need to hear all the creative ideas all the time. Girl. So. Oh, I wonder if he's a dreamer. He could be a neurodivergent dreamer where he or an overpromiser. He's just an overpromiser. He probably dreams big, talks about all these great things he's going to do, but never does them which is kind of like a little bit of a liar in my opinion. I think overpromising is a version of a lie because you're overpromising. You're like, look at all these creative ideas. Look at all these amazing things I'm going to do, but you never do it. And that's why I say, are you a career person? Or are you a job person? 
Are you, because like a career person is very serious about their career. It is not a joke to them. They are doing this thing, right? But if you're just like a dreamer, you can't be a dreamer and have a career. Like, I'm sorry, you can't, yeah, like you have to be a doer. You can't just say you're going to do it. You know, you got to do it, bros. I think that is a very important step is to cut off personal communication. I agree. And I know. Oh, wait, Jose, totally true. Girl, listen, you date people similar to you. Such a real statement. Personally, I only started dating healthy people when I started being a healthy person. Same. That was my life. It might not be yours, but truly until I got healthy myself, I couldn't see the red flags in people the same. I couldn't write people off. I couldn't like, I couldn't attract the right people. And truly, 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 until I started becoming a healthy person, uh, yeah, that's just what my life was. That's why I say, like, I'm not condemning you for being toxic. I've been in this relationship before. I've been in this dynamic before. You're holding out for something that just doesn't exist. And it takes a healthy person to know. A toxic person stays in the relationship. A healthy person goes, hey, this isn't for me, bro. It's just not for me. And that's the difference. A healthy person walks away and a toxic one stays. Or a toxic person who realizes they have to change, they also walk away. But you know what I mean? Like, imagine you're on the third date with this guy. You should be able to tell he's a dreamer. And it sounds like he's not going to do much more. Mimi says, what if you want to date when you are unhealthy, not healthy enough, uh, not unhealthy like they are, though? Well, regardless, I think it's okay to go. I think it's okay to live your life, right? You're allowed to date. You're allowed to go out with people. I think it's about honesty. I think the dilemma is people lie. I think he's lying to her. I think she's lying to herself, I think the dilemma is never, are we healthy or not, not healthy? It's, are we honest with each other through this process? Like, hey, I, I want to date. I want to have fun. I'm interested in this thing. This is what I want. It's like, this is what I want, right? And I think there's, that's like very specific. It's not bad to date when you're not healthy. It's bad to lie that you're healthier than you are. And I think people just don't want, it's hard to admit you're unhealthy. It's like very embarrassing for some people. You're like, oh my God. Am I the problem? Am I the drama? You are the drama enough to make this your life. But maybe you're not like the worst person in the world. You know, I think you should just be honest. Kristen said that was Kidology's issue. She was mentally unwell. So she let a toxic person in her life and she self betrays at multiple points. It's law that this happens. Once you get through, you can develop. Well, I think it's like canon. Somebody said Kidology is uh, internalized misogyny. Look, it's canon for queer independent women to have to suffer from internalized misogyny, okay? We tried to do that before, and but I, I do feel like this time we're both in a better place to actually follow it. If this was our last conversation, what would you never want me to forget? Ooh, oh, weird question. <sighs> what would I want you to never forget? All of the kind ways I have helped you. I just. Ugh, they're both gross. I'm not, I don't mean to be judgmental, but like, what are these answers are so egotistical. Like these answers are so narcissistic. It's hard to answer these kinds of questions. Okay. If I was breaking up with an ex, what would I never want them to forget? Um, the lessons we learned along the way, the good times. I don't know, but it's this idea that like, I never want you to forget how kind I was to you. It's like, that's your ego. Like she wants to be remembered as a kind person. I, interesting. I don't know. I want you to know that I actually really want the best. Mm -hmm. And I am trying or I've done things because I thought it was in the, in the moment. And um, I just, I want you to know that I have tried mm. to love you as much as I possibly could. And um, I also really do want the best for you. Like, myself aside, I hope you end up with the most brilliant, loving partner that's free. So they are breaking up. Should it be this hard is the title of this video. Mm. That you're meant to be with. <laughs> Jose says maybe they do belong together. Stop it. I mean, look, okay. There's always a healthier partner in a toxic relationship or there's always an equal amount of abuse. I think she's probably healthier than he is, but still toxic enough to be with him, which is really what this is about. 
but also barely in some ways, you know, but like, I, I hope they never talk to each other again. I hope this boundaries thing they're going to do. I hope they stick to it. I hope they delete each other's numbers and never talk to each other again. But I know it's hard. I remember the day I was so free. I remember the day it was November. I was looking at my cell phone. I saw a text message from him. I went like this and I pressed block. And after five years, I was like, that's it. I'm not doing it anymore. And my best friend was sitting next to me. and She goes, are you for real this time? I was like, bro, it's for real. I feel it. And I never, ever, ever went back. <laughs> and trust me, my friends watch me go back a lot. But there's something in you that just changes and you go, oh my God, I'm not going to go back anymore. It's done. And when it is done, oh, it is done. Oh, girl, the relief you will feel. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, I don't think I'd ever want you to forget um, how much I loved you and believed in you, even at times when you didn't believe in yourself. I think at times you've been really hard on yourself and it's just some stuff you've dealt with, you know, from younger years. And um, I just, those are the moments where I want to just cradle you and comfort you and say, What did he just say? Just some stuff you've dealt with, you know, from younger years. Are you, don't put her, 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 her trauma on blast. But what, I'm sorry, this is so manipulative. This is, this is manipulative. He's like, you remember that time I was so nice to you while you told me about your trauma from your childhood? Remember, I just want to hold you. Do you remember how nice I was to you? Sir, they're so, their answers are so like, remember how good I was to you? Remember how good of a person I was to you? <laughs> and um, I just, those are the moments where I want to just cradle you and comfort you and say, it's going to be okay. You're, you're a lot better than what you feel like you are right now. So go to therapy. I think I really would want you to leave knowing that you were loved you are loved and you're incredibly special. You're so loved, but not enough for me to get my shit together. You're so loved, but not enough for me to grow up. You're so loved, but not enough for me to be reliable in this relationship. That's how much I love you, baby. Enough not to get my shit together. Special and more talented than sometimes you allow yourself to accept. <sighs> so, yeah. Thanks for doing this with me. You're welcome. Okay, so she said all the things that people are afraid to openly admit. He received the things she said with incredible grace, wish the best for both of them together or apart. It's a very hard lesson to learn, but for me, when it comes to relationships, maybe is no. So everything that is not a strong yes should always be a clear no. Mm -hmm. I'm glad this channel is also showing imperfect relationships. Let's be compassionate with our comments because we've all been in unhealthy relationships and held on for longer than necessary. True, true, true. That's true. We've all been here. Okay. Comment says she just seems like she's completely disappointed and tired of trying. The way she's communicating shows that she loves him deeply. Mm. You know, I wonder about that. I don't know if I loved. Well, let me rephrase. I think I loved as deeply as I could my ex-partners. But the way that I love my partner now is so deep. I've never been this deep before. Like I've just never been this seen and in love. Like, okay, here's something. Oh, here's a TikTok to move off of this topic. It's good. It relates. Okay, let's watch this because I have something to say about this actually. So this relates. Okay, hold on. Loading, loading. He said, who's the one person in the world who knows you the best? She said, my sister. And then not he me. looked shocked. And he said, not me. And she said, because you only know me from 17 on, but my sister's known me my whole life. Okay, so that's the TikTok. And I think that is really, really interesting because I was talking to my partner about this. My partner knows me better than my sister knows me, better than my parents know me, better than my best friends know me, but he's known me less time. But because he can see more of me, he knows me. What my friends and family know is my history, but that's not who I am. I'm not my history. That history contributes to who I am, but who I really am are the parts of me that are deeply 
the me that is me, the things that you, that I only want to show my partner, the things that I could never talk to my parents or other people about because they wouldn't be able to understand me. I think this is why my theory of like being seen is so real for somebody like me, where I've tried to explain myself over and over and over again to people, but they're not getting it. And if you're not getting it, you're not seeing me, which means you might understand my history. You might have known me for 30 years, but if I have to explain to you over and over and over again who I am and you're not getting it and you're confused and it's not clicking, then you're not seeing me, like my full me. You're seeing parts of me, which is valid. It is the accurate parts you can see of me is me. You're just not seeing the whole picture. It's like I'm a painting and when most people look at me, they see most of the painting or some of the painting. My partner sees every part of it. He sees the layers. He sees all the years it took to build the painting. He understands the painting because it's not about being in the same room as somebody. It's about he like can un he can see it like in depth. And that's amazing. Like that is an amazing, just like the most amazing experience I've ever had in my life where he can really understand me, even though he's known me the least amount of time. So all those people that are like, you can't marry somebody within a year. No, you can't marry somebody who doesn't see you within a year. That's why you date to see if they can eventually see you. But if they see all of you and you're compatible and you're every, like it's a good relationship, that's your person. It's not about the time, it's about the depth. And I think it hurts people's feelings sometimes, though not always, especially not in my family, because my family gets it. My parents raised me this way. My parents, my mom always says, your dad sees me the best. He knows everything about me. He knows me better than my kids. He knows me better than my friends. Of course he does. And of course she knows him better than anybody. Of course they do. That's why they've been married for 40 years. <laughs> and they're in love. Of course they do. But that doesn't mean that that's a bad thing. That's a beautiful thing. That's kind of the goal, right? Mimi says, who in your family sees you, you, you think sees you the most? I think my farm brother sees me the most. I think for sure. Um, he understands me very well, but we're very similar. Like my little brother and I are very, very similar. He's just the Catholic version and I'm the atheist version. But we're like, we're very, and he's the conservative and I'm the liberal, but we're very similar. And we were, you can tell we're, we're very much alike. Let me, so he's my, my favorite sibling. I feel like he knows me the best. I feel like he can regurgitate my ideas and understand me, but he doesn't see all of me. He doesn't like embody my experience all the time or understand it. And I think this is like, what's so important It's I, when I was in my past relationships, I would have partners say to me, when are you going to when am I going to be as important to you as like your sister is? And I'd say, well, my sister's known me for way longer. But what a silly answer that was as a young person. Of course, she's known me for longer. She will always know me for longer. But that's not what the question was. What he was really asking me or what she was asking me or what any of my partners were asking me is when am I going to feel like we, like you feel so seen by me that I, that I replace that intimacy you feel with your sister or your brothers or people who've known you for longer. And the truth is, is like, not till you see me and I feel like I see you. And so for me, until I met this partner, that just didn't happen. And that's what I was looking for. Like I would go on dates and I would talk to people, but I could tell them like, you don't see me. You see parts of me, but it's not enough. You don't see enough of me for me to come home to you every night. And I want to come home to somebody who sees me. So that when I say like we're living together and it's the most fabulous experience of my life, it's because I'm coming home to somebody who fully sees my painting. There's no, there's no fear or mystery. There's no like concern. There's only like, I see it and I love it and I want it. Give me 14 of them. You know, there's only love. Now, again, I love my family and I love my parents and they know me better than people will know me. But at the same time, because they can't see parts of me, it's hard for them to really know me. Like you probably know my my queer side better than my mother does, right? Because for you, like queerness is a real thing and queerness is an experience and queerness is valid and pansexuality is real and all of these things, right? But if somebody can't see that, it's like they're not getting it. They're not feeling it. It's like even when it comes to being born religious, like I can identify with religious groups. I can really feel moved by their 
religiousness <laughs> in ways my atheist friends can't. There are atheists in my life that get like grossed out at seeing like religious people. And I'm like, oh, but look how beautiful the ceremony is. And like, oh, I, I know what this really means to them. And that's because I can see it. I can understand it. Mimi says, how do you muster the courage to show the entire painting to another person? I really don't know how to do that. Can I be real? Here's the secret. I didn't have to. He could just see it. I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. You know, uh, a YouTuber once asked me, because, uh, you know, I was always, I'm very blunt with the internet. I put myself out there. And he said, do you ever feel scared that you put so much of yourself on the internet that somebody will come into your life using that information to try to date you or be your friend or any of that stuff? And I said, well, maybe to be my friend, <laughs> maybe I'd fall for that. But to be a romantic partner, no. Because realistically, no matter how much of myself I tell the internet to, when people try to date me, I can see that they don't see me. It doesn't matter if I tell it to them. Guys, I'm literally telling it to them. I will tell them. It's not a secret. And they still don't get it. I could sit there for hours trying to explain myself to somebody. And if they're not getting it, they can't see it. My partner didn't need me to explain it. He could see it. And then when we had conversations, I started to notice like, oh, I don't have to repeat myself. And oh my gosh, he can finish my sentences. And oh my gosh, like he can regurgitate my ideas back to me. Oh my God, he can like move deeply into them and tear them apart and be like, this is what you're thinking. And oh, this is why you came to this conclusion. And like, oh, I see how you got here. And I'm like, oh, wow. So of course we never stop talking because like imagine being in a room with someone who understands how you think so perfectly. You never have to repeat yourself a hundred billion times until you're so tired. You just want to cry. Because how many panels have you seen us on where you have to repeat things and people aren't getting it and it's not their fault. They're not bad people. They're just not seeing you. So you have to repeat it in ways where you got to figure out where's our language going to match. Now imagine you're dating that person. Imagine you're dating that person and you are working night after night after night for hours into the middle of the night trying to get this person who says they love you to understand you. It's like being on a panel on YouTube, trying to get people to understand you. That's what it's like. Do you want to live your life like you're on a panel on YouTube? Or do you want to go home to somebody who makes you feel relieved, girl? Jose says, Brittany, stop making me feel so single. Listen, better single than dating somebody who makes you feel like you're on a YouTube panel. Okay, better single than dating somebody you're arguing with every night who makes you feel so abandoned, in my opinion. I loved my single life. It was fabulous. It was fantastic. I had a great time. It was great. Okay. I would rather go back to being single than in a relationship with somebody. Oh my God. Who made me feel like we have to, I'm sorry. Can we uh, define objective here? Can we, um, Brittany, uh, I feel, uh, excuse me, Wick, Wick, can you get Brittany to define objective, please? <laughs> Shout out to Wick, Wick TV. <laughs> It's literally like, bro, I'm in a relationship where your partner's like, um, well, actually, <laughs> oh, the stress, bro. I don't want to debate my partner. I want to discuss. I don't have to bring in a moderator for my relationship. Hold on. I want to see these comments a little bit more too. Oh, look at this one. Look at this comment. This comment says, okay, Ben, honey, you need to let her go out of respect for yourself, baby. She's saying in so many words that she does not have feelings for you. She needs to work on respecting her own boundaries. But in the meantime, Ben, she does not love you. She does not want you. Leave. Ooh, girl. They said this is so difficult to watch. He is so in and she is so out. If you've ever been in this position, watching this is gut-wrenching. The comments know, girl. The comments know. Mm-hmm. Oh, anyways. I love love. And I really want you all to be in healthy relationships. But girl, the, the remember, the title of this video was, should it be this hard? And the answer is no. It should not be this hard. The answer is no. Yeah, I'm sick of wishing out for the truth And living life is a fool